Chosen Vessels, what's the deal? It's your main man, Drew Tube, and I'm back at you again with another video. So I need every Chosen Vessel to hit that like, hit that share, and don't forget to subscribe. Shout out to Drew Nation, the Galactic Family, and the GCVs. Let's get it started. Look, true, the true honest meaning of the fear of, the true honest meaning of the fear of the Lord, and how to look at Jesus and God in your life. The true honest meaning of the fear of the Lord and how to look at Jesus and God in your life. The fear of the Lord is the understanding, I mean, is the beginning of understanding and knowledge, I believe. That's what the Bible says. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. When people say to fear God, there are people who actually, <clears throat> excuse me, there are people who actually take on the spirit of fear and in a, in a form of humbling themselves. Like they are, they, they take on this, this spirit of being afraid of God. I know I'm going, I know I could possibly catch some flack for this, but hear me out. All right. The Lord, the word Lord, all right, somebody broke this down the other day, not what I'm about to break down, but somebody had broke down. They said God, the word God. This simply just means power. God means power. The word God means power. So when you have God in your life, you have power in your life, right? So that's why. When you have God in you, you are aware of the power of God in you. But the beginning to fear the Lord is the beginning of, of understanding and wisdom. I believe that's what, what the Bible says. But the fear, right? So God means power. Lord, the word Lord, the word Lord is an ancient word for law. And a lot of these terms and words are synonymous for each other. When you have the word word and you have the word sword, the word sword is just the word word with an S in front of it. Your tongue is what? A two-edged sword. What comes off the tongue? words why is the tongue split you got a left side and you got a right side you got one side of the tongue and then you got the other side of a, the tongue with a line down the middle and ironically a sword looks the same exact way words cut deep your words can cut a person what does a sword do it cuts a person all right, especially those medieval swords, Whishing! slice right through you. Okay, bone and all. That's rough, man. Have a sword slice through your bone. Ooh, dang, there must be some 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 rough times to live in, man. The knights of the you know, the black knights of the of what do they call it? the black knights of the Templar or something or shining black knights. Some some with the black knights, some with the knights. The knights of the Templar. I know. I just I don't. I can't remember the word. But everybody remembers those History Channel episodes, the Knights of the Shining Templar, something like that. All right. But, yo, they had swords. And in the Bible, the Bible's always referencing words to cut deep. All right. Your words will cut into the flesh and in the spirit of demonic vessels, people who are demonically possessed. God's word is like a sword. It cuts them. All right. So now that we got that out the way, the word Lord is an ancient word for law. The word Lord means law. So what laws? All right. God's got laws, statutes and commandments. There are also laws of the universe. There are also laws of your mind. All right. And the Bible is a book about you. 
it's a it's a when once you once you decode and break the Bible down, you'll see that it's a book about you and it's a book about the mind. The 12 disciples in the Bible are about the 12 functions of the mind. And Jesus being the 13th person in that group, making 12 disciples and Jesus being number 13. That's why the number 13 is significant. Jesus being the head of the 12 disciples and even Judas, even Judas is you. All right, Jesus is you. The, the 12 disciples are you. They're the 12 faculties and functions of your mind. And when you have thoughts of disbelief, when you have thoughts of negativity, when you have thoughts of, I can't do it, that's Judas. It's the Judas in you. All right, you have Jesus in you, and guess what? You got Judas in you too. Who are you listening to? Who are you going to believe? You're going to believe Jesus? Because if I, last time I remember, I saw it in red too. Jesus said that we can do what he did and more. So I'm like, whoa, I'm blown away. I'm like 11, 12 years old, might even been 13. I'm like, whoa, sitting in the bathroom reading the Bible. Oh, I could do what Jesus did and more? Flip to a couple pages, ye are gods. I'm like, whoa, what? I can't even touch on this yet. What's that about? But back to this. I can do what Christ did and greater. So you're going to listen to Jesus? How sweet the sound, Jesus. Or are you going to listen to Judas? Are you going to be a Jesus? How sweet the sound. Or are you going to be a Judas? And walk around with your head down. With no smiles and only frowns. Which one? Who are you listening to? Who are you listening to? Who are you listening to? And... The, the 13th per, the 13th person is you because you are in control of the functions of your mind. You have control over the functions of your mind. You do. You are, and that's why you are Jesus in your life. Everyone is Jesus in their life. They don't want you to think that you're divine. They don't want you to think that you have a special connection to the Father Jesus's connection with God is a representation in the Bible about your connection with the Father. That's a representation of you having a connection with the Father. I'm not saying that you are Christ. I'm saying that you are Jesus because you have him in you and because of your and because of how that represents your connection with the Father God, just like he had his connection with God. You have your connection with God as well. They don't want you to know or to think that you have a connection like Jesus did. What did he say? We can do what he did and greater. He can, we can do what he did and greater. That's what the book says. Don't be mad at me. Read your Bible. So with you being the 13th member with the group, the 12 disciples, the 12 disciples represent the 12 faculties of your mind. And the 13th one is you being in control of those faculties. And the laws of mind govern those faculties. You have to use those laws of mind to govern your faculties of your mind. And that's the true meaning of the fear of the Lord. Because the Lord means, the word Lord means law. The fear of the Lord is the fear of the law. And by fear, they mean understanding of the law according to its use. And the fear, meaning the understanding as in the proper use. Fear as in using the laws properly because you obviously want to avoid an undesired outcome. 
You don't want any undesirable outcomes. So you want to use the laws correctly. That's why you fear the Lord. You're not supposed to be walking around trembling and afraid just because of God. God wants you to love. God wants you to, to, to be just. God wants you to feel good. He just wants you to obey him and his laws. And he wants you to do that so that way you can use your mind correctly. That way you can live correctly. All right? That way you can, you can have a righteous life and you can please him. And that way he can bless you. You want to be blessed by God, then you have to abide by the laws. All right? You have to abide by the law. And the fear of the Lord is the proper use of the law. We're not saying you're supposed to be walking around trembling and being afraid of God. All right? If you're, if you're misusing the law, then whatever, whatever way you use it, it's going to come back to you. That's what they say. That's why the Bible says what you, you sow, what you reap. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Every man will stand something about your words and judgment. All right. So like the words you speak, <laughs> the, the, the words you speak, the thoughts you think, they have control over your life. And that's what that's what these laws are trying to get you to do. All right. These laws are set in place for you to control your mind. These laws are set in place for you to have power over your mind, not to have other people control your mind. It's for you to have control over your mind. It's for you to have peace in your life. It's for when things go wrong, for you to know how to make things go right. So that way, when you have stress, when you have stalkers, when you have um, unruly people and uh, certain spirits come out of people, come after you, try to attack you, you got the laws of your mind. You know how to govern your mind. You know how to take control of your mind. So... True, uh, the true honest meaning of the fear of the Lord and how to look at Jesus and God in your life. All right. God is power. God has the power. All right. We are God's children of the most high. That means we are power and we have that power in us. All right. We're, we're not God specifically, but the amount of power that he gave us here on this earth, we're supposed to be using it to its full potential. And that's you becoming your greatest version. That's you becoming your best self. That's you using your mind to get what you want out of life. Believing in yourself, believing in God and his word, all right? And knowing how to use your mind. Knowing how to use your mind. The Bible is a book about your mind. It, it, it teaches you how to use your mind in a, in a lot of ways that just haven't been broken down so people are looking at it literally. People are looking at the Bible literally and you're not supposed to take it literally. If you take the Bible literally, you won't be able to understand it in its true meaning and in its true form. So I just wanted to break that down. All right. The fear of the Lord is the proper use of the law. All right. You're not supposed to be walking around shaking and fear of your God. All right. God doesn't require you to be like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a. you don't got to be no old slave with your faith. All right. <laughs> you don't, you don't got to be, you don't got to be no old slave with your faith. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to do what God want me to do now. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do what the Lord want me to do now. It, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't all like that people. It's not, it's not that deep. All right. You're obviously not supposed to do certain things like steal, kill. A lot of those things are common sense. You know that inherently. But there are laws in place for people to know the full understanding. No, you should not do those things. Those things displease God. But also, you have to know the laws that govern your mind. There's laws out here for this physical world. 
and there's laws for your mind that govern your mind for you to be able to be upright for you to walk upright for you to be holy for you to be divine for you to do what jesus did and greater all right so you have to use those laws correctly and that is the that is the beginning of of the of understanding the proper use of the law the proper use of the law is the beginning of understanding that's why the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom and understanding when you use the law properly because if you use it improperly you know what could possibly happen it's like electricity if you if you use electricity improperly it could kill somebody it could electrocute you it could set your home on fire people could possibly die from the electric current if it's too strong somebody goes to plug in an outlet boom the whole uh a, a whole wiring might explode and catch on fire and the person's hand might blow off make your head blow off all right person <laughs> like eddie murphy make your head blow off <laughs> might make your uh yo <laughs> might make your hand blow off or something all right fire is you is it it, it 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 um it could burn down a whole house. It could it could set a whole forest on fire. It could destroy crops. It could be used to harm someone or torture someone or to destroy something. All right. Water. It could be used to drown somebody. All right. You could you could put somebody underneath water and drown them and suffocate the air out their lungs. All right. All things that can be used for evil, all things that could be used for bad. All right. Even money. Let's let's even put money into it. You got people uh, paying for uh, for people to get killed. You got people putting hits on people, right? The money is not bad itself, but if somebody uses it to put a hit on somebody, all right. If somebody goes out and robs somebody for it, if somebody hits somebody over the head for it, they made a bad decision for something good. It's the money itself still not bad. The actions that they did to go get it are bad. That's why you need the proper use of the law. That's why you need the proper use of the law. So many people out here are suffering for improper use of the law of mind. Proper use, they're not fearing the Lord. All right? If they feared the Lord, they would be using the laws of their mind correctly. They wouldn't be out here robbing nobody. They wouldn't be out here committing no crimes. All right? But back to what we were saying about the elements, the electricity, the water, the fire. Those things can be very destructive. But... You could use fire to, to heat a home. That's something good, right? You could use fire to uh, cook. You could use water to quench your thirst, to wash your baby. All right? <laughs> wash, your, wash your baby, everybody. All right? You could use water to wash your stinking feet. All right? Somebody ain't washed their feet. All right? You could use water to, to grow some plants. All right? What plants you growing? You can use water to um, make sure your grass is growing, okay? Make sure your yard ain't got no brown spots, okay? That skunk smell is strong. Something ate it. Yeah, something had that skunk for, for lunch, or that skunk had to, to fight its way, its way out of a fight, something. All right, um, that, funk, that skunk is not faking the funk to get what it wants. <laughs> um, you can use electricity to light your whole house up you could use electricity to turn on turn on the lights in, in your, your crib so now you, you can see what you're doing you're not walking into stuff your heater work your fridge work your ac work your water work all right you got the electricity going all right they turn the electricity back on hallelujah but all these things could be either used for good or bad all these things can be used for good or bad so whether you, you like that, and that's why the fear of the Lord is the proper use of the law. All right. When you use the law incorrectly, bad things happen. When you use fire incorrectly, bad things happen. When you use water incorrectly, bad things happen. All these things can be used for good. But when they're used incorrectly, when they're used improperly, when the proper use is not implied or applied. Then what happens? Bad stuff. Bad stuff. That's what you got. That's what you got. Bad stuff. That's what you got. That's what you got. Bad stuff. Bad stuff. Bad, 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 bad. All right. 
So if you don't want any bad stuff in your life, you're going to have to use the law of mind properly. You're not supposed to just go around just being afraid because that fear is going to eat your spirit up. All right. That fear is going to draw negative things into your life. You're supposed to fear, but not fear in the sense of being afraid. You're supposed to fear in the sense of doing doing something right. All right. And, and this is why a lot of people who fear attract bad things into their life, because that fear is 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 like a magnet. It's a it's a mental magnet. When you emotionalize fear, you put uh, images in your mind, which get suppressed against your subconscious mind and they manifest into reality because that's the only that's what makes you afraid. You think of something, you see the image in your mind, you uh, emotionalize the, the terrible experience. You see it, feel it and think it happening. And once you hold on to that long enough and you start to believe that and you and mentally accept it, what do you think happens? Negative experiences. That's why you have to use the laws of your mind properly. All right. That's why you got to use the that, That's why the fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. All right. When you fear the Lord, you're not walking around literally afraid. You're afraid in the sense of, you know what? I want to do this right. So I don't do this wrong. You don't have to be afraid, like shivering in your boots, like Ooh, looking up in the sky. Whoa. Whoa. OK. All right, nature. Nature is nature. OK, a hawk was circling over me. And as soon as I look, yo, they always dip, man. I don't know why they don't like being, they they really sensitive, man. They, they don't like being watched. It's like they be hovering over you and hovering over you. Some of them, they stick around and some of them, they just dip. Like they'll be hovering over you and you'll look up. They be like, I'm out. I'm still protecting you, but I'm out. And then some of them, they just, they just hover over you. Be like, yeah, I'm your spirit. I'm your ancestor. I'm here. What's up? But that was a hawk, yo. I love hawks. I had a bird land on my shoulder, but let's not get sidetracked. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. All right. Like you, you when you look up at that, that's that's crazy, man. So that's that's synchronicity right there. Like that synchronicity. I said as soon as you look up and then I see the hawk circling over me and it dips off. That's synchronicity. But as soon as you that's truth right there. Hawks represent truth. All right. When you um when you look up at the sky you're not supposed to be you're not supposed to be looking up at the sky like oh, oh god i better not do this wrong i better do this right i better do... like it's not for that you're like people are living under the fear of a sky god you need to be living under this the fear of your third eye god what you're thinking you like you and that fear needs to be and and that here's the thing they have people looking at fear you you're not afraid all right. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff that was taken out of the Bible. And there was a lot of stuff that was put in to trick people. And we've been ignoring this noise campaign for at least 23 minutes now because somebody over there is. But they're not going to stop this, this knowledge, wisdom and understanding here, because this is a breakdown that you need for the soul, your mind, body and spirit. All right. So. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. You're not supposed to be walking around afraid, shaking your boots, thinking of a sky God. All right. You're supposed to be going within and you're supposed to be sur sur surplanting that fear with what you want. You don't fear anything. What you want, is, what you have is a is the, the, the want or desire for a desired outcome instead of fearing you're going to lose your job. You want job security instead of fearing that you're going to go broke. You just want to make sure your finances are OK instead of fearing that your something's going to happen to your kids because you're worried about their safety. You just want them to be safe and secure. So instead of being afraid, be solution based and figure out the opposite of your uh, at the opposite end of your fear is what you want. A lot of people are afraid of certain things, but it's a desired reality at the end of that fear. Somebody will fear driving or flying, but what they desire is to be safe and have a safe trip. You're not afraid. You desire something positive. So you have to see what is on the opposite end of your fear and check your desires out. So that way you're not fearing certain things. That way you're focused on your desire and you're attracting what you want. 
So don't fear, desire what you want. You don't fear, you desire to serve God righteously. That's all it is. All that, all that fear is, is just telling you is to serve God righteously. All right, you desire to, to, to live in a righteous way. You, you desire to live in a way that serves God. You don't have to be walking around here trembling in your boots, afraid of anything. All right, because the beginning of fear is the, is the, the, the beginning of fear is death. All right. The beginning of fear is death because it cancels out that love and you can't think two things in the same light. You can't have love and fear in you. All right. You can't have love in you and fear in you at the same time. You can't be thinking love and you can't be thinking fear in the same mind. The two can't exist in the same mind. Your mind can't think two thoughts at the same time. You can't think peace and have hate at the same time. All right. You, you can't think of um, you can't think of a sad thought and try to be happy at the same time. So what do you have to do? You have to use the laws of your mind correctly. And I'm going to drop a video on that. We're going to drop a video on the laws of mind and how to use them because that's definitely needed. But I just like the Lord put this on my spirit last night and told me to make this video. The Holy Spirit was like, yo, drop this, drop this on them. They're going to, they're going to need this one and they're going to love it. So here you, here we go. All right. The fear of the Lord is the fear of the law, and by fear they mean understanding of the law according to its use, and the fear meaning the understanding as in the proper use. Fear as in using the laws properly because you obviously want to avoid an undesired outcome. You want to avoid undesired outcomes, and that undesired outcome that you want to avoid is on the opposite end of the fear, all right? Yo, they dipped. As soon as I went to go put the camera on them, that undesired, whoop, everything, some, some things are just for you. Everything's not for the camera. All right. Um, that desired re outcome, that desired outcome that you want is on the opposite end of that fear. All right. So instead of the undesired outcome, you have, you want a desired outcome. So you want to be able to use the law properly. So that way you get your desired outcomes. All right. And instead of having fear, you want to serve God correctly. You want to abide by his laws so that way you can live the life you're supposed to live. And that way you can avoid problems. You can avoid undesired outcomes. You can avoid negativity. Avoid the, having the wrong people in your life. Avoid being the wrong person to you in your own life. All right. This is fighting, fighting your own devils. That's why I say about fighting. I always talk about like devils and stuff like that, but I always talk about fighting your own devils as well. Okay. I always definitely, I'm going to put this like this and see if y'all can see, see my buddies up here. Okay. See my, where we at buddies? Oh, yo, see, they, they always dip, man. They dipped on me, but they still hovering around me. That's my ancestors up there doing the spiritual circle around me. Letting me know I'm protected. Look, yo, all three of them. What up, ancestors? Yo, yo, ah, what up, ancestors? Oh, four. Oh, okay, we're getting real spiritual now. Okay, all right. Okay. All right, yo, okay, spirit guides, I see you. Yo, guide me. Guide me. Show me where I need to go. All right. What up, family? But yo, man, use the laws of your mind correctly so that way you could have a whole bunch of birds hovering over you in nature that are your ancestors and they're letting you know you uh speaking some truth and you're on the right path okay so everybody use the laws of your mind correctly i'm gonna drop that video on how to use those laws in another video all right i just wanted to drop i had to drop this as a precursor first this is the this is the uh this is the precursor, okay? This is the, the beginning. I had to set a prede uh what's the word? A pre pre predecessor, I think the word is. Predecessor, almost said it backwards. Uh I had to set the, the pre press I had I had to set that word. All right, I had to set the precedent. There we go. I had to set the precedent, the precedent with this video. So with that being said, the fear of the Lord is the proper use of the law. All right, because why else would you fear the law? You would fear the law because you want to use it properly. All right. At the, at the opposite end of fear is your desired reality. You don't want a, des, you don't want an undesired outcome. You don't want no undesired outcomes. You want the reality that you desire and God wants to help you get that. And that's why you fear the Lord. So you can have your desired reality. 
That's why the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So now you have something to stand on. You have a foundation, all right? You have a foundation to stand on now, all right? So now you understand that fear, all right? Because I know if, if anybody's like me, they was walking around literally shaking. They are shaking in their boots for the Lord. Like, I got you, Jesus. I got you, God. I ain't going to do that. <laughs> Like, nah, man, it ain't, you know what's, you know, right from wrong. The Bible clearly tells you do this. Don't do that. So once you figure that out, that's the, that's the physical aspect. Now you have to learn and see what the Bible talks about on a deeper level, on the spiritual aspect, as far as your mind. And you can't take things literally because if you do, you won't be able to uh, understand the Bible in, uh, uh, in its full interpretation. All right. How it's meant to be understood. There's been another, damn, that, that skunk smell is strong, man. I hope I ain't get sprayed. I know I, sh I should be straight, but I, whoo, I'm going I'm to I'm uh, make sure I, I, I'm going to stay kind of away from this area. But, um, yo, everybody hit that like button, hit that share button. It's been another Drew Tube special. Shout out to the Chosen Vessels. We lit, we out. I'll see everybody in the next video. Peace, love and light. We out.